Hello now, welcome to this second episode of the Discovery Series Gallery from Home video. My name is Julian Flack and today I will discuss kitchen adults. But not just about any kitchen adults. Today I will talk about the life and work of a very important Hopi artist called Wilson Tawakwaptewa, who single-handedly disrupted the way kitchen adults were ever created. So let's head to northeastern Arizona. Our story today starts on Third Mesa in a village called Oraibi. This is the village where Wilson Tawakwaptewa was born in 1873. We actually don't know much about the childhood of Tawakwaptewa, except that he was born in the Bear Clan. In 1904, Tawakwaptewa was named Kikmongui or village chief of Oraibi. The first decade of the 20th century was a time of turmoil for the Hopi people. Indeed, they had crucial choices to make at the time. Should they cooperate with the American authorities or fight and resist to keep their traditional way of life? Tawakwaptewa was the leader of a group called the Friendlies or the Accommodators who championed a strategic cooperation with the authorities. He rallied a majority of his people, but was eventually unable to prevent a major split between Hopi villages. Ironically, a few years later, Tawakwaptewa was deported to California and incarcerated for a few years by the American authorities. He was officially sent to school to learn how to become a better leader for his people upon his return. When he was uh, finally allowed to uh, return to Hopi land, he was a changed man. He resumed his duties as village chief and spiritual leader, but he also embarked on a very different path, that of an artist. During the 1920s, Tawakwaptewa started to carve kachina dolls to sell them to tourists. As you well know, Kachina dolls, or Katsinam, as the ones shown here, were given to Hopi children. They were considered to be protectors and prayers for rain. They were also used as educational tools. There are hundreds of different Kachina spirits and deities in a Hopi pantheon. Each one can be precisely identified by the motives and colors on his masks and costumes. Well, Wilson Tawakwaptewa decided to take a different approach. Given his role as chief and spiritual leader, he had an intimate knowledge of Kachina symbolism. Out of respect for the spirits and in line with his responsibility as a religious figure, he decided that the dolls meant to be sold to collectors should not be the same as the one given to children. Therefore, he invented his own motives and started making up or mixing up new symbols in his creations. It is often impossible to identify which Kachina spirit he precisely meant to depict in his works. As he didn't want to reveal any secrets, he created a new pantheon filled with humor, poetry and colors. Tawakwaptewa never signed his dolls, but they are highly recognizable. Long ears or wings, antenna, crossed eyes are pretty common in his katsina. His trademarks include polka dots, black and white clown stripes, and unusual colors such as electric blue or a whole range of orange and ochre shades. Wilson Tawakwaptewa was an artist in the purest sense. He developed his own universe, his personal artistic vocabulary, while remaining true to his beliefs and his duties. He was the very first Hopi who dared to take a step aside from the Kachina tradition and has inspired generations of carvers since his time. For more information about uh, Wilson Tawakwaptewa's life and work, you can refer to this excellent new book by my good friend, expert and fellow dealer, Barry Walsh. You will also find other examples of Kachina dolls on our website, Facebook, and Instagram pages. Well, 
That's all for today. Stay tuned and stay safe. This is Julian Flack, live from home.